<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another Spooktober edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down. Uh, we have been lacking in that department this week because the outside world has just been has been beating me down. Man, work work's been a rough one. Um, but we are getting ourselves caught up on one of my favorite weeks of Spooktober, and that's my classic uh, horror villain run, man. Some of my favorite scary movie uh, antagonists. Uh, actually, all six of my favorites. It's load up this list every year. Last year we watched the originals. This year we're diving into all the sequels. And there are two guys that have been on my chest a lot during Spooktober. And we finally got to talk about one of them. This guy right here, Mr. Freddy Krueger. You want to see my thoughts on Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. You can see him right up there. But now it's time to turn our attention to this guy. Oh, he's the other big silent scary killer in the world of slasher flicks. He is the carrot. Well, not him. But his mother, he's tied into it. it you know, the, the reason the first movie works so well is the crazy surprise that his mom is the killer. But Jason's, or well, the Voorhees are, 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 our, are people who brought us the campfire slasher, man. You know, the, those camp slashers that are some of my favorites. They stem from here. And this is our first go with the actual Jason Voorhees. And, you know, uh, in, in a list that, you know, has kind of had a lot of ups and downs, I find that... Friday the 13th is just, just good. Like, it's just fine, man. I ain't got, I really don't have any problems with this movie. Um, what am I talking about? Why don't you pull up a chair? Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in. Spoiler free, or as spoiler free as we can be for a movie uh, that came out back in the 80s. Uh, into Friday the 13th, part two. Um, and once again, we, we get to uh, hang out with a Voorhees. Uh, like I said, the, the, the success of the first one really stems from a you know kind of kicking off something that is super popular in horror now which is the camp slasher and you know doing you know things that like i said at that time was new man the slasher was was all the rage after halloween and you know that first friday the 13th doubled down on that genre and doubled down uh, on the kills and then hit us with a crazy twist that no one ever sees coming and especially if you get into friday the 13th now like everyone knows friday the 13th is jason country and a lot of times you know people get in and they're like holy co i didn't know that his mom was the killer in the first one and for me that's a lot of the success of the first one the second one is actual jason Voorhees. uh we we get to see him sporadically um th this one is it it's interesting because similarly to his mother he, he wears the bag on his head for this entire movie uh the the hockey mask two movies in hasn't even uh hit yet in the friday the 13th series um but pretty much for the entire movie we only ever see jason's legs and his arms and hands um which is fine you know it keeps the mystery and there's so much mystery about like what jason looks like uh specifically after we see him jump out of the water uh at the end and one of the other things uh with this friday the 13th movie that you'll see in a bunch of these movies is when they pick up you know i mean this is one of the few that picks up about five years after the original um, but it starts by literally revisiting the entire end of the first Friday the 13th. And it's just one of those where you get a lot of like retelling of the story. And this whole movie opens with literally the end of Friday the 13th. Um, and, you know, that's fine. It's a, it's a cool way to open it. You know, you kind of get to, to bring back, you know, uh, you know, the lead character from the last one. And then you get to off them real quick. Uh, kind of, you know, one of those things that I think plays into uh, elements of Scream that I love so much. Um, you know, is having that, you know, opening sequence where you can just target, like, that, that one person. And we're going to kill them. They have nothing to do with the main story. Um, and then we move on. And once, you know, you've kind of cleaned up everything that's left over from the last one, we can advance to being at a new camp. Uh, that's just down the way on the same lake um, where, you know, Camp Crystal Lake doesn't exist anymore we've got this uh new camp that is on crystal lake probably i don't know roughly a couple miles maybe for, from uh the original and that naturally is going to give us an in for jason to return and you know the people in and around camp crystal lake not a huge fan of the fact that there is a camp coming back because it's been five years with no issues you know everything around jason issues he drowned mom goes and kills a bunch of you know camp counselors then she gets killed the actual, you know, the, the survivor from the entire massacre has disappeared after almost drowning on her own because Jason pulled her into the water. And, uh, you know, you, there, there's a little bit of tension that you get sometimes. There, there's like, 
Naturally, two of the, the counselors go to check out Camp Crystal Lake, and they, they call it Camp Blood. They get stopped by a police officer, and that's kind of like the one spot where it's like, you guys better be on your best behavior, you're going to lose this whole thing. And that is the point where it's like, you know, that now now things get to go crazy, man. And slowly we start to see Jason picking off everybody that we have here. And, you know, like I said, this is this movie is just fine. Um, I, I think the kills are fine. Um, some of the gore is is decent. Um, you know, I mean, it has all of the, the, the flavors that you're looking for in a camp slasher. Um, and, and you have some pretty solid moments. I mean, you have one of the characters in a wheelchair. And he gets, like, the whole machete to the face and then just down, like, a whole flight of stairs. You know what I mean? And you have you have some good bait and switches where we have a character uh, who's flirting with another character that several times is kind of set up to kind of feel like Jason. Um, the usage of the POV, uh, you know, which obviously was a Halloween staple, but something that Friday the 13th always took on as well that used and was always used very effectively. Used effectively here. And, you know, I enjoy watching Jason kind of go around and pick everybody off, you know, um, even if it's not the entire group of cab counselors. Um for the most part, I enjoy when he is on screen and when he's tracking people down. I don't think that you needed to wait as long as you do to avoid showing him at all because he wears the bag on his head. Um, but naturally, spoilers, we do get to see what he looks like growing up. Uh, you know, the bag comes off and there's a cool, another kind of like bait and switch type moment with, with our main character uh, here who's played... Uh, by Amy Steele, Ginny. Um, you know, she comes up with a good survival tactic toward the end of the movie that, that's clever. Um, that pays off for a little bit until Jason finds a way to put it together. Um, but I, I think everything that you have set up within this one, you know, works really well. Uh, and, you know, it's not as good as the original by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, that, that twist that it's Jason's mom is really the, the thing that elevates Friday the 13th so much to place where this one, like I said, it's fine, man. Like you have, you have a fun cast of young up and comers, you know, at the time, uh, like I said, Amy Steele is, is a wonderful final girl for us with Ginny. Um, you know, her, uh, like boyfriend and the head of the camp, uh, you know, Paul played by J John Fury. He, he, he presents himself as a very good leader early on. Um, and like I said, slowly you have to try to sparse these folks out so we can start picking them off through the course of one night. Um, but like he does a good job, you know, as the quote unquote leader. Uh, you got Stuart Charno, who is our, uh, you know, resident comedian. He has some really funny moments. Uh, it's one of those two where like he tells a couple jokes throughout the, the course of, of the, the, the movie. And it's, it, <laughs> he's got some funny ones. Um, so I have fun with him and everybody else that shows up i mean you got you know the the a lot of pretty looking people um a lot of scantily clad pretty looking people in this movie i mean it, it checks off all of your typical camp slasher tropes and you have good chemistry amongst this cast i think the cast works well on screen and even though there really aren't any big standout actors in it um Ginny is probably the closest you know amy Steele does a pretty good job where i'm like that's a, that's a solid performance, you know. It's not a Betsy Palmer uh, who crushes, you know, as Mrs. Voorhees. But, you know, Amy Steele, like I said, is a, is a solid final girl for us to have in this one. And everybody else around it just adds fun and, and you know, energy to the movie. So, while Friday the 13th isn't, you know, a part two, rather, is not a, you know, slam dunk or as good as its original Friday the 13th, I think it's just fine entry, and it's, you know, the beginning. I mean, it's an important entry. It's the beginning of Jason being the main killer for the Friday the 13th series. And like I said, if you're a fan of the camp slasher, you like, you know, gore and, you know, lots of slasher-type kills, you get tons of that here. Uh, and, you know, like I said, Jason kills people in some, some fun ways, man. I mean, there is a there is a two-for-one special at one point in the movie that any time happens, I'm like... God, man, like, just the sheer force that he's got to hit to make that happen. But, like I said, I think there's enough there to have a good time, certainly in and around the Halloween season. Like, Halloween and Friday the 13th have always been my two go-to staples in and around this time. Um, they're the biggest of these franchises, and, you know, they tend to be my favorites because, as a classic slasher fan, like, I like the silent stalker killer. And you get that, you know, here. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't like the other guys, too. I love all six of these guys uh, all together. But Friday the 13th Part 2 
it's a pretty solid movie. So why don't we get the uh, C-Maniacs up so we can give this bad boy a score. And uh, like I said, this movie is just fine. Plenty of kills, plenty of blood. Uh, like I said, they certainly dial that up. This is certainly one of the sequels that ups its game in the gore and, and blood category. And, you know, still finds a way to keep you tense and on edge. And there are some nice scary moments for Jason in this one. And you have a pretty fun, young, youthful pretty looking cast uh, as you would expect and you have you know bits of humor which always are, are necessities in, in these movies you have solid scary moments and you have plenty of people that we can pick off throughout the course of the movie um that provide you know interesting ways of going out so for the seaman uh friday the 13th part two uh is a solid 2.9 out of 5 C Maniacs. It's right there with Hellraiser 2. Um, I just think Hellraiser goes to some interesting places that keeps it just above Friday the 13th Part 2. But a 2.9 ain't bad at all and now i want to know what you're thinking what are your thoughts on friday the 13th part two uh, are you a jason fan um this is the first entry with jason as the main killer um was that something that you knew the first time that you dove into friday the 13th or when you you know watch the first one you're like wait what when does jason come in and then popped on the second one and went, oh okay there it is and did you like that entry um where does this one fall for you uh if you've never seen friday the 13th are you a fan of camp slashers um and, and if you've never seen the og uh I, I, you gotta give it a go even if it's part two um i mean watch part one first and then part two um but whether you've seen the movie or not i want to know everything you're thinking good bad indifferent down below in the comment section look forward to talking to you guys down there as always if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and if you're new you want to come hang out with the seaman all spooked over long as i try to get myself back on track and keep this up somewhat daily with you guys uh, you just like what i'm doing anytime i'm talking movies tv trailer reactions getting ready to go see the last duel right now so if that's something that interests you um and you'd like to know my opinion on that well maybe you should come join sea maniac nation it's a super fun time we, we we know we know what we're doing over here man and i love interacting with you guys if you want to be part of that kick-ass community real easy just jump over there hit that subscribe button hit that little bell if you want those alerts until next time for the seamans Cinema, sit down. I've been the C Man. I'm signing off. Bruce. Oh, <laughs> hey, what's going on? Uh, you must be sticking around because you're looking for more content featuring this guy. Well, guess what? You're in the right place. You can check out more videos right here and right here. Uh, and if you have and you want to come join that C Maniac Nation, you can hit that subscribe right over there.